Literally, Jesus' last assignment has to be, as the church, our first priority. The Great Commission. If you're a follower of Jesus, the Great Commission is your commission. And it's not just the Great Commission. Church, it's the only commission. Jesus didn't give us four commissions. Jesus gave us one great commission that has four parts to it. And here's what's sad is that modern uh, research has revealed that over the last 20, 25 years, the church in the West has lost touch with that priority. We become obsessed with other things. We've begun to create Christianity as a self-improvement program. We've turned Christianity into a self-help behavior modification system, and we've turned Jesus into a life enhancement coach instead of Jesus being the Savior and the gospel being our salvation and the Great Commission being our priority. Most recent research shows that today, as of today, almost 60% of evangelical Christians do not and cannot describe what the Great Commission is. So if you were to ask six out of 10 Christians in America right now, or in the West, hey, what is the Great Commission? What is the one thing that Jesus left to his church to prioritize our lives around? If you were to ask him, six out of 10 would not be able to tell you that. But yet it's the one and the ultimate commission mandate that Jesus gave the church. And we just read it, Matthew 28. You can read it in Luke 24. You can read it in Acts chapter 1. You can read it in Mark 16. All of the Gospels have it. The book of Acts has it. But yet we have lost it because we prioritized other things. Church, we got to get back to the one thing that Jesus called us to prioritize our life with. Because when Jesus returns, he's not going to ask us, how's your behavior? How's your modification plan? How's your, you know, all the different things that we think it's about. He's going to say, what did you do with the time, the talent, the resources, and the opportunities I gave you? Did you use it to win the lost. You know, Proverbs says that the, the person that wins souls is wise. Are, did you win souls? Did you proclaim the gospel? Did you do the things that Jesus gave us as a commandment? Or did we begin to shift gears and look at it simply through a selfish lens? Today, I want to help us recalibrate our hearts around this first priority. This is, this is in the heart of God. And wherever God's heart is, that's where we want our hearts. And you ask, if you were to really take a, a look at the scriptures and everything that we know about God, from the pages of the Bible and even personal experience, and you were to narrow it down to what's the one thing that God obsesses about, it would be people. Because Jesus did not come to build some time-sensitive expiration date institution. Jesus came to seek and to save people, real people, people that live here, people that are in this room, people that live on the other side of the planet that you and I have never met and will never meet. Jesus came to die and to ransom back to God people in Africa, people in Europe, people in Iceland, people in India, people in Asia, people in Papua New Guinea, people in Australia, people in Central and South America, people in North America, people in Canada, every nation on the face of the earth, Jesus came to win them and to save them. When John 3.16 tells us that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, we need to see the value that God places on people through the filter of the gift that he gave, which was Jesus. Because, oh, what an incredible gift that was. You don't just give that level of sacrifice of laying down the life of your son and laying down the Lord of heaven and earth if you don't love people, but God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And he calls us to love people, and to give our lives to what he loves. But if we're being honest, it's really easy for us to become 
self-centered and also calloused when it comes to the lostness of the world that we're living in or to the fact that there are people that have never heard the name of Jesus. They've never heard a clear presentation of the gospel. And oftentimes when we think of missions, we think of on the other side of the world, and that's true. But do you know that North America, by percentage, North America, the country that you and I live in, is actually by percentage the fourth largest mission field of unreached people in the entire world. So we have the fourth largest, the first the, the most unreached area of the world is, you know, it's Asia is primarily that. And then number two is the Middle East. And number three is areas in Northern Africa. And number four is North America by percentage. Church, why did Jesus put you and I in the country and the culture at the time and the place that we live at? He put us here because people that he loves who have never had an opportunity to make him their Lord and Savior need us to be committed to the first priority, the great commission that is on God's heart so that they too can experience their broken heart being healed, so that they too can experience good news in a world where bad news is plaguing people. They need to hear deliverance from things that have kept them bound, recovery of sight to spiritual truth so that Jesus can save them and deliver them from the stronghold of the enemy. In order for us to do that, though, we've got to understand what the Great Commission is, and then we've got to embrace it as our first priority. 